Hey everybody, it's Brandon Holiday here today with a All You Need to Know About World of Warships video. Today we're going to cover all you need to know about the Republic's armor, along with some game, well, not gameplay, but uh, training room testing just to demonstrate the armor layout of this vessel. So let's get straight to it. The first thing you'll see is green all over the place. It is 32mm of armor everywhere with a standard 19mm superstructure, standard 32mm of aft plating extending just uh, to the front of the gun turret. And again, standard bow armor for 32mm here. This is standardized armor, meaning that every single tier 8, 9, and 10 battleship will have this kind of an armor thick at some point in the bow and the stern. The Germans, of course, are getting their extended lower bow plating that extends up here, so only the upper area would be vulnerable to lull pen from that of the Yamato. Now, of course, with 32mm of armor, that means that people spamming high explosives at you, battleships, Cruise, light cruisers with IFHE, 6 inch cruisers with IFHE, 152.4mm cruisers with IFHE, basically Russian ones, US ones. Of course, German cruisers spamming HE, you in any way, shape, or form are going to fully penetrate this. And heavy cruisers, 8 inch guns, 20.3cm guns, 203mm guns, anything bigger than that, HE will go clean through this area here and do full damage. You do have a little bit of area here with 120, these are your. Uh, Secondary barbettes. Unfortunately, you don't get one for anything behind here. So it's just these and these secondary barbettes here that could potentially absorb some HE shells along with the one in the back. But everything else is full damage. You only have two gun turrets, which again, less area to absorb incoming damage from. And you do need to be careful about these guns because they can get knocked out and losing one gun turret is 50% of your firepower. So hiding the outer plating, we can see that you have a forward earth warship on the Citadel of 370 millimeters, anything below that you're not really likely to hit, so I wouldn't really consider that to be a much of a problem. Of course this means that a Yamato that, or a Musashi that just shoots you through the 32 millimeters plating here, because he just got, he, he does, doesn't care about the angle. He shoots straight through that into your 370, and a close range Yamato with around 900 millimeters of penetration can easily go through this kind of an armor. But what really matters is your Citadel. So let's well, hide the superstructure as well as the upper plating. We know that it is rather quite weak. So we have a look at the main belt. It is 400 millimeters. However, it is rather quite well inwards a slope. I would say that would be around about 15 to 20 degrees. And then on the inside of that, let's just hide the citadel for demonstrational purposes. We can see that there is a 70 millimeters of a thwash, uh, of a deck turtle back, and it extends throughout the entirety of the inside of this plate. So what this means is you have to go through 32mm of rather flat armor, followed by 400mm of armor, let's just say for the purpose of it, slope at 20, and then through a 70mm plating, and again, we can see inside of it, it's sloped at around, at around about like this, so I'd say it's about the same, so slope again at around about 20, which means that if you fish out a calculator, you'll just do the you know, 400, you know, 400 that goes uh, divided by cos of 20, and uh, plus 32, and and you'll come to around about 500 millimeters of penetration required to be able to go through the plating of the uh, turtlebacks, and then you'll end up with just having to then pierce through this or this. So the magazine area is 50 millimeters, and the engineering is 40 millimeters of armor here. You do have a citadel deck that's 60, but that doesn't get the uh, you know it, it's at such a in, at a such an angle you're not really going to hit that. Yes, the magazines here are also slightly slow forwards on the ship, so if you want to go through the magazine, you see the angle here, you'd be shooting at it more like this. Same goes for the rear magazines, sloped again like this, along with the hull, and of course the main belt. So if you want to shoot it, you want to, you don't want to be completely flat to the broadside, you want to be slightly more out like this, or slightly more out like this, to be able to get the angles to engage that. So that's the primary arm layout of the Republic. The main belt isn't really doesn't really extend that far into the water, so in theory it might be possible to slip a shell underneath by simply hitting this plating over here, and then there's no longer any water there, it's all inside of the ship, so it should, in theory you might be able to slip a shell through this at medium ranges, but uh, that's kind of the thing I was talking about on stream. I did uh, make, an, make the assumption that it should be possible, and I do suspect it might still be. However, if you do have the penetration, you can just shoot straight through this, straight through this, and then straight into that. It's a rather waterline area of the citadel, so you should... it is still possible. Otherwise, 
If you do get into a close pass situation or you get a flat broadside, that would be at close uh, quarters. If we just hide this and just show you where the barbettes are, you can see that there is an inside area here of 26 millimeters of armor. You just need to go through, perforate through the 32 millimeters of plating here and then perforate through the main belt of 400 millimeters here. It's above the 70 millimeters and there should be nothing inside uh, here. So all you need to do is perforate 32 plus 400 slope plus 26, which most battleships will just lol pen clean through. Well, pretty much all battleships will lol pen, which means that in theory you should be able to damage the internal uh, of the gun housing. If you're in a battleship and you're in a close pass, just shoot it here and you should be able to destroy the gun turrets of an Republic and still do some heavy damage to the ship. Of course, your other option is just to target the magazines down here, the magazines here, and hope some of your shelter go high, damage the gun turrets, to, re to either reset reloads or stop them from turning to engage you. So, with the arm layout of the Republic rather quickly covered, let's have a look at how this armor performs as a static target and a little bit of how it performs as a moving target in close quarters. Of course, at long range, Dispersion does mean that you can't really reliably impact the exact plate you want. And if you have a broadside that would be, just shoot it like shoot it in the central area and hope for the best. And if you have an angled that would be, or even you know a bow one or an angled one, if you're not in a Yamato, load HE, shoot it with HE, you'll still find lots of areas here that can be damaged by high explosive ammunition. Here we go again in a training group. I've now closed incredibly close the distance. It's 1.6 kilometer range to this Republic. Of course, that's with the central area of the ship. So this turret will be like 1.7, 1.8. And these two turrets are probably 1.5-ish. But you definitely should be able to do this at slightly longer ranges. And of course, in this case, I am using a Kronstadt. But if I had a battleship, for example, with bigger guns, say, for example, a Republic or a Yamato, I would easily be able to do this at much longer range if you can actually drop the shells near the waterline as it is a rather well hidden citadel, much like that of the US battleships, although in this case a lot more armor. 32mm on the outer plating, followed by 400mm slope at around about 20, plus 70mm of armor slope at around about 20. Of course we need to keep in mind normalization here with reduce the angles, so this is post normalization numbers. Plus in the engineering area basically underneath here it's 40mm plating, the area underneath here would be 50 millimeters, and the area underneath here would also be 50 millimeters. But in this case, let's shoot at the engineering just at the waterline and fire. And that's four citadels plus a couple of penetrations. So that's six hits out of nine, and fortunately, some of them just seem to have gone into the water and completely missed. So that's almost half of the health of a single Republic gone in a single Chrono Shot salvo. And let's do the exact same area just to see, just to demonstrate that it is reasonably repeatable. That's only four out of six hits. Let's aim and fire my rear turret as well. And there we go. Two salvos. Completely hit every off the face of the earth. Of course, this is not something you can reliably perform. And at slightly longer ranges, 3.8 kilometers range seems to be just out. Okay, the wreck is actually blocking, but uh, let's go for the magazines there. 3.7, 3.8 is about outside the range of what the Chrono Shot will be able to do this to. A Republic, according to my, my testing experience, seems to be that if you can get to around about 3.5 or lower, then you should be able to score Citadels against A Republic with a Chrono Shot. Of course, this isn't really just about how to Citadel A Republic with a Chrono Shot. In general, if you have sufficient penetration, you will be able to penetrate the main belt of A Republic by just simply shooting through all of the armor and brute forcing your way into the Citadel. And the uh, Russian dispersion, comrade. But yes, this isn't, isn't so much the purpose uh, of uh, just randomly shooting without much of a reason. So let's shoot one more AP salvo and then go to talk about some of the other things you can do to a Republic. And there we go, we got a Citadel. Let's get up close to it. The thing about the Barbiettes of the Republic is that if you do get up and close to a Republic. The, in a close pass, there are multiple options and ways to handle a Republic's armor. Of course, if you, you are in a battleship, this kind of a position, just simply shoot it in the waterline and delete it. However, if you're in a cruiser, it might just be for the better to shoot. Well, if you have enough penetration, just to shoot there. If you have a battleship as well and you feel like uh, you want to be a bit of patrol, or you don't really feel confident about shooting into the waterline, for example, a Republic is turning away. Just shooting into the upper belt near the barbette area. Remember, it's 400 millimeters of armor plus 32 millimeters plating plus 26 millimeters of 
uh, armor on the barbette. Shooting into this area here with large enough guns or high enough penetration will permit you to destroy the gun turrets. You do need to be careful though, if you shoot in the upper plate, you still have a 400mm barbette behind the 32mm. So again, if you don't have 500mm of penetration or above, shooting into this area here is unlikely to be able to jam the gun turret. But if you are able to do so, the jamming the gun turrets or breaking the guns of a Republic can be one way to make it an incredibly frustrating experience for the Republic player. So yes, of course this is without the main battery survivability mod. A lot of people will be tempted to shoot at the gun housing itself, of course it is an option to shoot the gun housing, but we see we did a grand total of zero damage to the ship there. Shooting the area here will still deal damage to the gun housing and the gun turret and eliminate the main battery of the opponent in this case. So you do have a broadside ship, be it a Republic or a Yamato or anything, shooting into the, uh, the barbette is a much better option than shooting the gun housing itself for destroying the gun, so deal damage to the ship and also damage the gun turrets. Now when it comes to high explosives, shooting near the waterline here, like I said, is a zero damage zone with high explosives. You can, of course, set fires as usual. However, if you actually want to deal damage with high explosives, you would need to avoid this barbette, this barbette, this barbette, this barbette. But the entirety of the bow is full AG damage zone. The upper belt is full AG damage zone. And of course, the superstructure that is away from these barbettes, as we covered already, are full HE downward zone, and of course you will destroy secondary gun turrets and whatnot. Again, the area near the belt is of course zero damage zone, that you can again set fires. Upper belt area is of course a damage zone, and there we go, the ship has been set on fire and destroyed. But again, 32mm of stone plating is of course also an HE damage zone. So that pretty much covers the Republic's armor. Of course, from the front, you don't necessarily want to shoot too much AP at it, unless you're in a Yamato, in which case you can lull 10 through the bow. But as everything else, it is usually just recommended to load up the skill ammo and shoot it for large amounts of skill damage overall. Of course, one of my rare terror shoots the poor Republic that has already been taken out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of a video. If you would like to see me continue to do armor reviews of uh, ships like this, so you can know the weak spots and the ways you can try to penetrate them for full <coughs> amounts of <coughs> damage, then go ahead and tell me in the comment section down below if you would like me to see, to see more content such as this. Otherwise, I will be continuing to do the All You Need to Know About World of Warships mini educational series, and to give you guys, uh, hopefully, as good of a as much knowledge that I have and share it with you guys as possible. So indeed, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you did. Like the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. All right, so bonus clip here that I did say I was going to show you a quick clip of, how, of doing this against a moving target. Now, in a close pass situation like this, of course, this is set up with my good friend Ivan here. You never want to ever just in turn like this, what you want to be doing is away turning after a close pass. So we're doing this just for the sake of testing, and what we're doing is we're synchronizing our guns, so we fire at the exact same time. The hope was basically we both die and it'd be a pretty nice explosion. But anyways, we're about to shoot again, and well, you'll see the result. I'm obviously going to the rear end armor this time, and there we go. He fails to kill me, but I get the kill on him, and you can see that being able to shoot an interning Republic like this, it does mean that the armor layout isn't anywhere near as uh, good because the Citadel's size is of course going to increase as you decide to intern it.